Wholesale to Million Family, you guys. Happy Monday. I'm back with another subscriber first Wholesale New interview. And you guys, today, um, I'm fortunate enough to bring him on to share with you guys. And the whole thing about this, you guys, is to share with you guys, um, you know, have these guests share with you guys the stories, kind of how they first got their wholesale deal done. And hopefully it'll be an inspiration and motivation to you to let you know that anybody can do this. You just have to keep pushing and keep going. Um, and our guest is from St. Louis, St. Louis, Missouri. And he closed his first wholesale deal for 1800 bucks back in August 31st of 2018 and went on to multiple, multiple deals and have four that is pending right now. Freaking on fire. Um, so you guys, if you guys do enjoy this kind of interview, remember to smash the thumbs up, show us, show our guests some love, drop the comment below. Let me know who, um, let me know if you recently closed your first wholesale deal. I would love to bring you onto the channel and uh, to have you share your story. But let's get, get rocking and rolling. Help me welcome Chris. What up? What up, buddy? What up, King Kong? Happy Monday to you. <laughs> thank you, buddy. Hey, thank you so much for uh, taking your precious time to come on, um, share with my audience your stories. Um, and I know that you have been just crushing it after that first wholesale deal that you did. Most definitely. You know, once you see that it works, it makes you get that fire under you. Like, you can do more now. You know, it gives you that motivation, you know, once you see it's real. Because, you know, you see a lot of people on the internet flashing checks and like, oh, this must be fake or it's a scam or it can't be real. Yeah, change your life. One deal can just change everything. Hands down, agree. When I first started, I was like, oh, man, I don't know, man. I Like, like, like you want it bad, but you'd be like, oh, I don't know if I can do it until you do it then it becomes a reality. And once it becomes a reality, you know that you can do it again and again and again. So Chris, jump into it, man. Share with us your stories. I really, really want to know kind of your stories, your background, where you were at financially, where you're at in your life, and then what makes you have that transition into wholesaling and why wholesaling, and then go from there to your first wholesale deal, man. All right. Uh, in life, I guess you can say I'm uh, one of the people that almost tries almost anything. So I'm one of those people like, oh, that's something Bitcoin out or, you know, one of these stupid things. You go chase the rabbit down the hole and find out, oh, it was whack, you know. So, you know, I'm one of those people that will try almost anything. So uh, I have a business here in St. Louis. We sell furniture, collectibles, antiques, things like that. So I'm already kind of in the sales business. So it kind of uh, helps me when it comes to if I can flip a piece of furniture or flip a TV or something like that, flip a house. And, you know, I got a lot of that from uh, like Grant Cardone or, uh, you know, Uncle, Uncle G. Uncle G. You know? He said, you're in the wrong vehicle. And I started thinking about it. Maybe I'm in the wrong vehicle because I have some of the skills already to, you know, make deals happen or communicate with people to negotiate, things like that. So I was basically in the wrong vehicle, which I still have my store and stuff now. But, um, you know, basically moving over into doing houses was kind of easier for me as far as to, communicating with sellers and things like that. So when I jumped over into that, it made it that much easier. So um, I'm, a, I'm also an auctioneer too. So I talk real fast. So 25 and I put about and I put about and I 65 and I, so we do all that stuff. So that's the fun. So, you know, there's just other stuff that I use to break the ice with sellers and things when I'm talking to them. I tell them, you know, we have other strategies and other ways to, you know, help make a deal happen. So that kind of puts sellers at ease. Um, as far as transitioning, like I said, it just made it that much easier. For me and as far as my first wholesale deal it was a deal that uh basically came off of a one dollar bandit sign and uh, it didn't even come from the same part of town where the house was now i don't know how these people do this i guess they're traveling around they know i'm on south side and they're on the north side I'm like how did you find my number but they call so i just you know go through the script and go through anyway so this house was in a place you would call a war zone. So most people are afraid, like, oh man, there's shootings, there's killings, there's, you know, something going on. They're always on the news, I guess. I guess, um, so a lot of people are afraid to invest or put their money into these areas. But some of these houses are just good houses, they just need, they're in a bad neighborhood. So uh, basically the seller called me. He was pretty motivated from the beginning. So he was like, yeah, I wanna sell this house so we can move on with our life and buy another house. Cause they're basically um, downsizing all their inventory. I guess this was the last house or something. And that's a lot of people that I've been coming across disgruntled landlords. So they seem to find me for some reason. So for this particular deal, he said he wanted $12,000 for the house. 
So, you know, I go through the whole script, you know, what we can do, we pay cash, you know, yada, yada. And so I'm thinking, man, I don't know if I want this house in this bad neighborhood. So, you know, I told him, I gathered all this information, found out it was a two bedroom, one bath, got the ARV for it. It was like 30 to 35. But I remember that, you know, you really can't go off that number because you're in such a bad area. So ARV, you know, how, how does that really come into play when it comes to dealing with the house in a so-called war zone? So I'm thinking, well, I'll just give him a low offer and he's not going to take it. You know, I'm just going to throw a low number out there. So I did a little research on it, found out that uh, basically you can get about 600 bucks a month on rent. So I said, well, 600 times 12, that's a year's worth of rent. I'll offer him 7,200, he'll decline and I'll move on. So I called him back about an hour later, made him the offer of 7,200. He said, we'll take it. I was like, "Uh uh-oh. (laughs) <laughs> I must have gave him too much. If he took the first offer, I should have went lower. But oh well, he took the offer for seventy two hundred. I sent him the one page contract over through DocuSign. So this was a virtual deal. I never met the seller. I never even saw the house. So I locked this whole contract up virtually, like the pro taught me how to do here. So I said, uh, we're gonna go ahead and send him this form over. He sent it right back within like ten or fifteen minutes. So I was like, man, he's really motivated. So I'm like, oh man, I don't have any buyers. I don't know anything about this. I just jumped in there and see what happens, you know. So, I'm, But I'm fearless when it comes to that stuff, like I said earlier. I, I just jump in there. You know, if I fail, I fail. I learn from it and move on. No problem. Take my lumps and move on. So I went on and uh, he got it under contract for 7200 So I sent it out to my buyers for 12500 or not buyers. I didn't have any buyers. I sent it out on Craigslist, uh, Bigger Pockets. Um, what else was it? Uh, my house deals, Facebook marketplace. Um, and I was gathering emails over time too, while I, you know, first started sending it out because I know I was going to find somebody who wanted to sell their house. So I was gathering emails. So I've been adding to my email list and I only had like maybe 20 or 30 names on the email list, which was pretty good for starting out. So I sent it out on my email, no hits, sent it out on those sites. I just mentioned nobody really wanted it. You know, some people, you know, I got a lot of wholesalers contacting me. Yeah, man, I got buyers we can do. And I'm like, "Mm." you know, you run into a lot of wholesalers in this game and you kind of have to have a good way to screen potential buyers. So I've come up, you know, with ways to find out if they're really buyers. Are you a cash buyer? How quick are you? Do you normally close? You know, just some screening questions to kind of weed out the wholesalers. And that's what I've been going through still going to this day. They kind of find me because, you know, the marketing so strong. And so I'm thinking that, well, you know, nobody wants this house. So, you know, two weeks go by and I locked it up under contract for like 40 days or something like that. Because I remember you telling me, you know, put it out far because, you know, especially when I don't have any buyers, I can't close in seven days because I don't even I, I'm not buying it. So, you know, I went on and put it out for like 40, 45 days, something like that. So, um, you know, two weeks go by, three weeks go by. I'm like, man, nobody wants this house except for wholesalers. And they're not, you know, they're faking. You know, a couple of people went to look at it. I got a couple of hits on out of town people like in California or in Florida and different out of town because they don't know, you know, they just see the numbers like, wow, you know, $12,000 house. That's cheap. I love that. And I also got a lot of calls from people that want to uh, rent it or rent to own, but I wasn't set up for any of that, you know, at the time. So they were like, you know, we want to rent to own. And I always just ask those people, what kind of down payment can you put? And they're telling me 1000 and stuff. I'm like, that's regular rent. I'm not, you know, dealing with that. So I'm like, I'm looking for somebody to say they can put like 5,000 down, something like that. Cause then I'll just put my money with it, close on the deal or something like that. Something creative, you know what I mean? So I kept the doors open for creativity because I already knew it was not a normal deal because of the area it was in. So I finally, uh, a few weeks go by. So I dropped the price. I'm like, well, I'll just drop it down to 9,500 since maybe nobody's here. I dropped it by three grand to, you know, try to spark some interest and see if somebody else wants it. And my buyer actually found it on Craigslist. So um, he emailed and then somehow he found my number. I guess they found me in multiple places. He found me on Craigslist and I believe on Facebook too. So when these buyers come out looking, they're really looking. So I guess they're kind of motivated too at times. So he ended up uh, contacting me and said, yeah, I want my guy there to do a walkthrough of it. And, you know, but the time's running out on my contract and I was going to do all this virtually if I could. But um, so I went on over there and met the guy and uh, we had to find the key. The key was in the mailbox. So we found the key to it, got into the house. We went inside. I mean, the house, it was good. You know, it needed appliances. And uh, really, that's it. Maybe cleaning up, cleaning up and some new appliances or, you know, better appliances because it had none. 
it had an oven, but no refrigerator, stuff like that. And oh, in between the time, while it's, since the time we locked up the contract and uh, did it, somebody stole the air conditioner from outside. So I was going to use that for a renegotiation with the seller, but I was like, you know, my time's running out. I just want to close the deal, get it out the way. And uh, so I did the walkthrough with the representative with uh, of the guy. The guy was actually in Florida, so he wasn't even in St. Louis. So that was a good thing. Um, so his buyer walked through. So I wanted to go there with him so I can kind of guide him on what to look at. And, oh, yeah, look, it looks great. Uh, you know, sell him on the deal to basically get the deal closed. You know, look at all the pluses. And he was like, yeah, it looks good. So we locked it up. And uh, like the ne- later on that afternoon, that buyer said, uh, like I said, I had it for 9500 He said, well, can you do 9000 on it? Sold. I'm not playing around. Sell that bad boy. So we got it under contract. And, you know, I was thinking about what you said about getting earnest money from him and how much. So I asked him, how much can you put down on it? And he told me 500 you know, and I wasn't going to haggle with him at this point because I'm down to the wire. If it was like earlier on, I might have said, well, I need a thousand or I need some more skin in the game because I don't know this guy. But, you know, they seem pretty, you know, professional. They came on out and did everything they said they were going to do. So, you know, when people do what they say they're going to do, you give them a little more trust. You see that they're not fake. They're not out here playing games and, you know, really just trying to wholesale a deal off to somebody else. So this was a real buyer. So um, we went on and did it. He uh, closed with the same title company, um, you know, that I was already kind of set up with or screened. So so that was a plus. He, he already closed deals with them previously. So it made it that much easier. They had all of his information on file, things like that. So we sent in the contract for nine grand. Uh, he put in his $500. He wired that in like the next day or something. So that was easy. He didn't cause me any problem. Um, a few days went by. Um, and actually the seller called me like the day after I got it locked up, like, Hey, yeah, what's going on with the house? You know, what's taking so long, you know? And I'm like, Oh no, we're good. Everything's in the title company should be calling you. And here's their number. Here's a point, you know, a point of contact over there to contact call Nicole over here and she'll straighten everything out and get you everything you need. So it, it kind of happened right on time. Cause I was about to just give them the house back. Like, man, nobody wants this thing. It's in a war zone, but it all happened out just on time when I was right, right about to give up myself but never quit. Keep pushing our way to the finish line. And so I have my contract set up to where we can actually go all the way up to the closing date. Not where, you know, some people put 14 days inspection and stuff like that. I put mine to where it basically goes all the way up to closing date. And so um, everything worked out on it. We closed that bad boy. I got my little check for 1800. I threw all that money right back into marketing. Um, And uh, so that's where we're at right now. Chris, dude, love the story and the way you explain it is so clear and it's so easy to follow and understand. I do have some questions for you, but one thing I want to point out is like when when I talk to when I when you talk to a hustler, you will know because the way that they talk and they operate is so differently. You know, there it's not so black and white. It's not like you know this is the rules. I'm gonna go with the rule of the book. You know, Chris said he's dancing to the last line. Buyer said, hey, 500 bucks, he don't want to nago, just get it done. The guy seems, you know, that's the kind of thing, like when you talk to someone that's, that has been, that has some business background and a hustler, they just know that when to go, when not to go, and when to fold, just like when they say in poker. So, dude, I love the story, Chris. Awesome, man. And congrats. Oh, why, well, thank you. Thank you. So, I mean, that, and it definitely made some hustle because I had to work to sell that thing because nobody wanted it. They were all like, oh, we don't buy on the north side. We only buy over here, you know. But I grew my buyers list from sending that out. So that was a good thing. It was like, you know, like they say, send out ghost ads, but it was a real deal I had. But it seemed so low. Like, who wants a house for 12 grand? That's cheap. So, yeah. you know, it's so low that anybody can buy it. So it, it grew my buyers list, and that was definitely, it helped me out for future things coming up. Love it, man. So, Chris, um, first question is, how long, how long was you, how long did, I guess, how long were you in the whole, um, uh, the other business? Um, my store, I have a huge warehouse with over 10,000 items available, uh-huh. so I sell a lot of stuff. Um, that's been up and running for about three years. Okay. Something like that. So, we sell a lot of stuff on eBay, Amazon. Uh, you know, all the websites, I have private label products, stuff like that. So like you said, I'm a hustler. So when they said real estate and you can get these big checks, this should be easy for me. Get me in the game. Put me in coach. <laughs> <laughs> love it, man, dude. I love it. Love it. Um, so three years in that business and then you jump on. So when did you initially got into real estate? Like when did you initially, you know, watch that first video or whatever? 
Actually, um, I was watching some motivational videos and things, and you know, uh, and I kind of fell asleep. But when I woke up, I saw a guy with a big beard named Max Maxwell. I was like, oh, what is this guy doing walking around with the camera talking about real estate? So I started watching his videos like, wait a minute, what's this wholesaling thing? And actually, this isn't the first time I've heard about wholesaling. I heard about this maybe, I don't know, 10 years ago, but that was on a different thing. That was, I heard of it from the foreclosure aspect. Oh, saving people from foreclosure and, you know, but I kind of dabbled in that maybe 10 years ago, but I didn't really know what I was doing and I never closed the deal. But this kind of opened it up different. And with the internet, YouTube University, channels like yours, Wholesale to Millions, Sean Terry, Max Maxwell, people like that that are dropping the information, there's absolutely no excuse not to get out here and at least give it a try. I mean, giving up before you even try makes no sense. You know, and I see a lot of people try to get into this and they're like, well, I got to have all the answers. You can never have all the answers. I still don't know what half of the stuff, but I'm learning every day. You have to keep learning, keep pushing, and you know, just don't give up. And that's exactly what I did. Love it, dude. Love it, Chris. And the thing is, the one thing Chris pointed out, you guys, is like 10 years ago, he heard about wholesaling. But you guys gotta understand, maybe at that time, it's like, it's like you hear the same thing, but your life, you're in a, a different place. So when you hear something, it, it triggers something different to you because you're at a different perspective position or different place in your life like before that it doesn't mean anything but all of a sudden you hear the same thing again and now it just it, it just connects so mm -hmm. um so chris you so your first video was max maxwell and and when was that uh i want to say probably about july like late july something like that I just, I just woke up to it like who is this guy with this big beard walking around with the camera talking about real estate looking smooth with it i say wait a minute this looks yeah. you're making it look too easy and yeah. so I, stum I stumbled i started searching and you know like i said came across your channel and when i saw that you talking about virtual wholesaling i said that's perfect i don't want to go meet the seller meet the buyer go look at property i don't you know i want to know what the numbers are because if the numbers don't make sense there's nothing to look at anyway so that's why i knew from the very beginning i wanted to be virtual as i can be and that's why you know, everything's been working out with that. So I've been about 80% virtual at, still to this day. Love it, man. Love it. So Chris Discover in July got in it, August 31st. So typically about a month later, 30 days later, got his first deal. Dude, that is hustling. That's now, right. Uh, now, when you, uh, when you lock that deal up on a contract with the seller, I understand that you didn't meet the seller or the property yet. You haven't seen it yet. And uh, hmm. how much do you put out of earnest money? On the paperwork, I put one hundred dollars. So, now, and I even have it in my uh, agreement—not the contract. We don't use the c word around here. The agreement that uh, you know this one hundred dollars will be held in escrow with the title company. So I didn't actually hand them anything. It was supposedly held, but the title company didn't even ask for it. So they knew I was, you know, moving the deal, and you know, and I actually have a good relationship with that title company right now. We have four deals in escrow right now. With it. Love it. Love it, man. So now, Chris, and I want to point this out is does this, does, like, did the seller even brought up the whole earnest money with you? He did not even mention it. They were so motivated thinking about earnest money, even knowing about earnest money. I know he knows about it because they have multiple property. Um, but, you know, people don't care about that stuff. That's something we're putting, that's a problem that we're creating that we don't need to create. They don't care about the earnest money. As long as it's some consideration, $1, $10, $100, you know, it's just, like I said, it's on my contract or agreement that, you know, it's $100. And if somebody wants more, it's just, you know, I'll put it on there. That's not a problem. Although I uh, did have a seller in a later deal that I'm dealing with now that was kind of worried about it. But, you know, I smoothed it over with her and she's okay. <laughs> nice. Love it, man. So um, earnest money down, send it out to your buyers. Um, you tied up for 40 days. That's nice. Tied up for 40 days. Didn't even have a buyer's list yet. Just start sending it out. Now, um, let me see here. So the buyer came from Craigslist. The deal came from a bandit sign. And um, you have the, so how, so um, how do you found the title company? I'm sorry. Yeah. How do you find the title company? Uh, I went to some local real estate investing meetings and things like that because I knew I needed to get some better education, you know, not just from the internet. I, I wanted to meet some people, some boots on the ground, some people who's actually doing deals. And so I talked to them and they were telling me the title company that they use. And so I called them up and uh, I, I, you know, told them what I was trying to do. They said, yeah, we do them all the time. 
So that was a good thing. They do double close. They do uh, assignments and they do, you know, everything you want to do. They don't do subject to deals, but I have another company set up for that. So whenever I find one of those types. Nice, man. And the thing is, you guys, you don't have to reinvent and go out there and try to find. Just go ahead and post the questions on some of the social media. Just like Chris mentioned, go to your local RIA, start networking with people. Use title company that people have already used before because you know that they've done these kind of deals. So you don't have to go out there and hunt. And then when you send in a deal and then they came back to you and say, oh, we can't do that. The seller has to know, so you guys gotta understand. Like, 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 just go and ask questions. And remember, a lot of times they'll ask for free. You know, do something in exchange for for their information for their value. But some will will give to you for free, but just don't offer that. And uh, the thing is, you know, Chris, man, he tied up for forty days. You guys, when I first started out, I did not know that you can actually tie the con the the property with the seller, like, you know, and still get at a discount for thirty days, forty days, fifty days, sixty days, ninety days. Um, you know, I always thought when I, and, and I lost on so many deals because I keep on thinking, you know, to get a good deal from the seller, you have to move quick, which means you have to tell them, Hey, I can close in seven days. I can close in 10 days. So when I first started, you know, that, that kind of concerned me because I was like, well, first of all, I don't have a buyer's list. And second of all, I don't know if, if I can close that quick. Right. So, and, and it, and, and that's, what's kind of a uh, uh, scare me. From tying deal up on the contract because of the time frame that I didn't know that that that, that I can tie it up for a, a super long time. That makes total sense because a lot of people do that. Another buddy of mine here, he's been dealing with it longer than me. He hasn't closed the deal yet, and I'm like, man, you got to change your mindset and get some better education because you know he's still going out to see properties and stuff. And I'm like, man, you need to talk to them on the phone. You waste a lot of time, gas, energy, effort. If the numbers aren't even close, I don't want to see your property. You know and um, and, and it, it just makes a big difference. Agree. I agree, Chris. So got this buyer locked in, um, sent it out, got the buyer locked in. And how long did uh, you set up the closing date with the buyer? Um, they, the title company did it in about, I want to say about a week, maybe not okay. even that long. I mean, maybe like seven, eight days, something like that. And uh, they, call, they called me and said, yeah, you got a check up here. I said, on my way. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, man. So... Um, I guess everybody would want to kind of know is so I'm going to have questions. So, so the seller, are they in that city or they're out of? The, the sellers were actually in, yeah, they're in St. Louis. They still here. And that was the last property I believe of theirs. And, uh, they were just glad to get rid of this one. Cause this one was a headache for them because it's in that area. And like I said, somebody stole the air conditioner from the time we locked it under contract. So it's like, if they're stealing the air conditioner and pipes and things and, you know, doing all this breaking in houses, Man, you know, that's somebody's problem that I don't want to have. That's right. their problem. I want to help them as much as I can, but, you know, I'm not going to do something I can't do, like you just said, with trying to lock it up for seven days and 10 days. And that's what I learned from talking to sellers. Ask good questions, you know, ask really good questions. What do you want out of this? What are you looking to do? How soon are you looking to close? Things like that. Because if you don't know what they want, you can't help them. And I don't want to offer something that they didn't ask for. They didn't ask for a seven-day closing. So I'm not offering a seven-day closing. Simple. Dude, very well said, Chris. Now, um, on this deal here, so what do you figure for ARV? Because you mentioned that ARV was 38 to 35, but since it's in a war zone, what do you kind of figure afterwards that since it's in a war zone, that the ARV is what? Yeah, it was. it's the same ARV, uh, you know, when you look at what's sold in the area. But, you know, um, I can't use those numbers because it's going off rental. You know, I know when you're in a rough area, go off rental numbers, not off ARV. What does it rent for? How much income can it produce? How much money can it put in the pocket of the investor? So if you use that number more so than ARV, you know, you can use that. But I even asked the question on one of the groups I'm in on Facebook, does ARV even matter in a war zone? Because I'm like, does it? You know, in my opinion, I mean, you can look at that, but that's not what people are buying off of. They're buying off how much money can it bring in. So that's the number that I was really going off of. Gotcha, man. So um, you mentioned that it, it can rent for 600 bucks a month. And what do you figure the a rehab would be? Uh, maybe two to three K, just because it didn't need anything but appliances. It had no refrigerator, you know, stuff like that. Upgrade appliances, maybe clean it up, freshen it up. But it really needed nothing. The house, is nothing wrong with the house for real. It just was in a bad area. Yep, gotcha, man. So now, Chris, um, so when you talk to the seller, they, uh, they, they asked for 12000 right? That's correct. Okay, so they asked for 12000 
And how do you figure to offer them the 7,200? Uh, I use the rental income of $600 a month times 12, which means a year. So I say they can bring in $7,200 a month for somebody. So somebody would buy a house for one year's worth of income, I would believe, right? So I said 7,200, that'll be my offer and uh, see what he says. So I, and looking back at it, I probably could have offered him six grand or five grand or some lower number, but you know, you live and you learn, you know? Yeah. So I just said, I want to get a deal under contract, send it out, go through the process. Cause I'm going to learn as I go. I can't wait for, you know, the magical jelly beans to fall out of the sky and be perfect for me. Nothing's going to be perfect. So I just went on and locked it up for 7,200, one year's worth of income. Nice man. And that's the thing you guys, you guys got to understand the important on the first deal it's not so much the amount. Yes, it's great to make a large amount, but it's not the amount. It's the process. Because once you know the process, you can do it over and over and over again. And, that, and you know that there's plenty of money out there to be made. And it's all about getting the process done. So when you, you know, so, so, so just focus on getting your first deal done, whether it's $500, 1000 bucks, 200 bucks, 100 bucks. But man, I'm telling you, that first deal will give you the fuel. Mm -hmm. just crush it because you know if you can make a hundred bucks off of that first deal you can go to a hundred thousand and then you can go to a million it's the sky's the limit in this business that's 100 um, percent true chris um so i guess some things here is what are some tips tricks or advice that you can give to you know beginners starting out kind of in the same boat trying to figure out trying to do the first wholesale deal um, one of the things I would say most definitely is keep the marketing going. Do not stop the marketing just because you have a deal under contract. You're working one little deal because that deal can fall apart. I didn't mention I've had probably, I don't know, 10 or 12 properties locked under contract and all of them didn't make it to the finish line. Everything's not going to make it, you know, so keep the marketing going regardless if you have a deal under contract. Um, cause I have what four deals pending right now. Two of them have title issues. Um, one's a 25 K deal that I can't wait to get that one going. Cause, uh, that's been under contract for a while for over a month now. And they had a person that, uh, was on the deed. It was a, not a husband and wife, but a couple, basically they're on the deed and, uh, he's deceased and she's still here. So we have to get the heirs to sign off on it. And then the estate owed like a couple thousand bucks in, um, you know, medical bills and, uh, department of motor vehicle bills. And I'm like, what is all this stuff? They owe two thousand dollars. I'll pay it. Just get this thing to the finish line. I'll take twenty three k over the twenty five just to get to the finish line because I know you know at any moment that seller can decide you know oh well it's taking too long or you know things change you know so I just know to keep pushing, keep pushing no matter what, no matter what obstacle come up, don't give up. Keep pushing these deals to the finish line. Keep the marketing out because another deal can come up. So that's how we have multiple deals going at the same exact time right now. Very nice, Chris. And dude, I'm in the same, I'm in the same situation with you. We had a deal. This is back, man, this is back like two, three months ago. Okay. It was supposed to move to closing already. 22 K got buyers, got seller, got buyer, exact same situations. Um, they were like kind of husband and wife or not really. And then, she, and then she passed away and now I got to go to the hair. And the thing is the kids does not want to help the, the, the husband because they have some kind of a bad relationship. So the kid doesn't want help. That seller still wants to sell. He's now trying to go through uh, probate and get an attorney. And one thing I can tell you, you know, and, and just like Chris, I want to be upfront with you guys and be real here. Not every deal that we lock up a contract will go to closing. Because sometimes the repair cost of seller tells us when our buyer goes out there, it's more. They don't want to renegotiate on the price, so it doesn't work. Title issue comes up and things like that falls apart. So when you focus on working one deal, you're missing out on other deals. So, you know, don't, you know, work on it, work on it, but don't, don't teach just focus on, it, on that one deal because that one deal falls apart, then you have nothing. Um, so mm -hmm. dude, I'm in the same boat. And now we, so we went back to the set seller, tied on the contract, locked it up for another. We asked him if he want to extend it for another four months. He agreed. He extended to another four months. He's going through probate right now. Finger crossed. Buyer still wants in. I got the assignment locked in with the buyers. Buyer still wants in. Uh, on it, got the non-refundable from the buyers and everything like that. And we're right now trying to push and get this thing closed. And another thing that Chris point out, you guys, it's nothing done until you get that money, you get that check in your hand. Anything can fall apart. Anything. Even at the day of closing, the seller said, nope, don't want to sign. Or maybe the, the buyer don't want to sign, which is, which is fine because you at least get some money, right? Because you got their deposit. 
but the seller could say, hey, I don't want to sign. You know? Exactly. And yeah, and I, yeah, and I, I agree because, like I said, I got several right now in escrow. I got about, I don't know, 40K in escrow pending, just hoping to get to the finish line. Like, come on, guys. That big 25K deal. I had another deal that I locked up. I actually did it virtually again. I, I sent, sent it out to him. He signed it. Um, I went out to meet him to get the key for it. I had a buyer come 30 minutes later. He took the deal. So it all happened in like 24 hours, the whole deal. And it's in escrow. But he bought the house from um, a tax sale, and he didn't quiet the title or something like that, I guess. And so they're trying to get some uh, stuff off from an old – something old off of it but the guy bought the house for cash you know long you know like a year ago and i can't get this thing to closing because they got a stupid thing on the title i'm like come on man and that's like a six grand deal right there i'm like come on close this deal get to the finish line so you know yeah. i just keep working keep pushing because i know anything can happen and they can fall off all together but we got the non-refundable in from the buyer we're just waiting on the finish line now to get to the <laughs> title nice nice man and um so that's the thing you guys when you Lock property on the contract with the seller. You want to lock it up as long as you can. The best way is to ask them, just like Chris said, ask them how long, how how you know how how soon are they looking to close on it. Lock it up as long as you can, and when you find that buyer, is close it as quickly as you can. And always ask the buyer how quickly can you close. So um, you know how quickly can you close. And remember, do not give off any kind of a buy that that buyer is your only buyer. Mm -hmm. No matter what, even if that's your only buyer, do not give off. I always say, even if that's the only buyer that took the fight, I said, yeah, you know what? We're working on a couple other buyers. They're very interested in it. They're talking to their partner. They're trying to get their finance together so they can pull the trigger. So you always ask them to, to keep that buyers on their toes like they have competitions, all right? Um, so, so you always want to get the longest with the seller, the shortest with the buyer, because like I said, until you get that check, anything can happen. Most definitely, because I have my uh, agreement with the seller set up to where we have a closing date, but we say you can add up to 90 days to clear title problems. That's on our agreement with the seller. And then on our agreement with the, the assignment agreement with the buyer, it states you can close on or before this date, which might be two weeks or something, but, um, or as soon as title is clear. So I have it set up to where, you know, nobody can escape. <laughs> love it man so um chris i see behind you you actually do some other things um and you know i, I do appreciate your time so i want to give you your spotlight right now share with everyone you know what, what kind of service you're offering and things like that how can people connect with you and, and maybe work with you or something like that man yeah i do a lot of things so i help people uh with other business matters because like i said i've been an entrepreneur i've been a serial entrepreneur for some years now so you learn a lot of stuff a lot of different industries like this hat here this is a private label that i sell online a private label product that i created and you know we sell it so i help people set up systems like that things like that um connecting with me my number is 314 i'm just playing i'm not giving my phone number <laughs> You can find me on social media, all social media, at Chris Monroe, STL, Snapchat, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, you name it, Chris Monroe, STL. And my website is ChrisMonroeSTL.com as well. So um, connecting with me is real easy. You know, I try to help people out as much as I can, you know, but I don't want to give somebody a full, you know, a whole two hours of just talking about stuff. Like, come on, guy, you got to pay for that. You're trying to pick my brain for free? Mm, I gotta be like Kong get 35k. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Um, you you know what? Um, this this is kind of off the subject here, but uh, talking about the mentor one on one, the 35k, you guys. I put that video out two days ago, and just super super surprised. We actually got four. We actually got four people that sent in a video, and uh, it, it has come up down with a decisions. Um, but I finally I finally picked one because I felt it, and I can see it. So I will keep you guys posted on this on this journey, but I'm just I'm excited myself because this is the first time I never would have thought you know six years ago six years ago when I stepped my foot into real estate never ever imagined that one day I'll be able to 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 to, to say the word mentor you know but yeah. uh but man it's 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 like now I'm in a position where I, I'm just super excited for this you know just as much as the other person on the other end I, I'm excited for this because you know you guys gotta understand. It takes years to build your reputation. It only takes one minute to destroy it. And that's why I'm so important and so picky 
but you guys got to do a video. I want to see it. I want to feel it. I want to see that. I want to feel that connections before I can pull the trigger and say, yes, this is the, this is the person, the students that I want to take on because that's how important it is to me because I want this relationship to go off good, you know, to, to make sure that you're solid. I'm solid. I'm going to deliver and give you everything you got. But on the same time, it's exactly the same way the other round. And I just hope to, you know, to make sure that the relationship is good. Because like I said, your reputation is just super important. But dude, I was so Congratulations. Dude, I was just, um, I was just, just so surprised. But I'll keep you guys posted on it. But I am ready to change his financial life forever through this whole selling business. So I, I'm just super excited, man. You're going to have to go up on the price after this first one goes through. You're going to say it's 60K now because I already. <laughs> Dude, Chris, you read my mind, bro, because you guys yes. don't understand. There's only one of me. And when, and when you're, it's like limited, you know, it's like limited thing, you know, when you know the image, like the, um, what, what was it? When, 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 when a lot of people want it and there's only one, then obviously the value, the, the, the things go up. When multiple, like when, when you, it's like when you have a lot of it, then the value is just not there. But Chris, supply right, and demand, supply and demand. Supply and demand, that's correct. 35K is just a starting point. <laughs> <laughs> we can only go up from here, and then you'll have a live testimonial from somebody who went through your program, and you can't do nothing but go up from there. I mean, I, I, congratulations. Good job. Thanks, man. And uh, I'm going to try to do video uh, and things like that and, and keep you guys posted. And when we first close this, Get him to close his first wholesale deal. Dude, I'm going to bring him on and have him share with you guys his stories. Um, but, Chris, any last word? Um, um, any last word, man? Uh, last words is, uh, like I say, don't give up. Keep pushing no matter what happens, whatever obstacles come up, because obstacles will come up. So you have to be a number one problem solver. If you can't solve problems, this may not be the business for you, because problems are going to always come up, and you have to deal with them as they come. Play the cards you're dealt, not the cards you wish to have. Dude, love it. Man, Chris, thank you so much for this interview. Chris, you guys, man, just, just from talking to Chris, get down to earth guy, man. So if you guys want to reach out to him, I'll make sure, um, Chris, after this, that you can email me um, all your contact info that you want people to reach out to you. I'll make sure I put that in the description, you guys. Thank you so much for you guys' time. And absolutely, Chris, thank you so much, man. You, thank you so much for, for, for your precious time, dude. Uh, because I know time is money. I appreciate it, and thank you for having me on. And I want to be on for the, uh, what do you call it, the power players, the power hitters, or what do you do, that other one you do? The I'm trying to get to house. that one. Power, the power house. house. There you go. <laughs> the power house. Um, so, you guys, if you guys are new to the channel, you're interested in learning about wholesaling, virtually or not, but I share with you how to do it completely virtually, then boom, smash the subscribe button. If you do enjoy this interview, come on, you guys. Don't have to show me, but show our guests some love and smash that thumbs up for me. Take care, you guys. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks, Chris.